Sometimes I wish I could just go through a week without having to find windows to do bandage changes, to not have to always have these time frames um, that have to be there. Um, so, you know, it's very hard to just spontaneously do a lot of things. The disease itself, recessive dystrophic epidermal lysis bullosa. It's recessively inherited in our case, which means both my husband and I are carriers of this defect in this cell structure. Our DNA, each of us, in, in the long strand of DNA, each of us has a problem in that link. In his case, it is literally not just a blistering disease. The collagen 7 is like the glue that holds layers of skin together. It's like taking Velcro. You have all the loops, but there's no hooks. So the loops are kind of pointless. N needless to say, the adhesion part of the layers between the skin are not there. They're defective. And so the skin not only blisters, but just a rubbing on it, it can just literally tear off. It does all these weird little spontaneous things. And then there's so many resulting factors from cause and effect as well you know, growth retardation, the anemia. You know, these kids can die from so many different things. They can die from heart failure. They can die from infection complications. And the list goes on and on and on. There's just so much of the body that's involved. Try to gauge how much of the external body is actually in open wounds. Boy, that's a tough one because if you were to look at the neck down, I would say more than 50% is in open and deep painful wounds. And that's sad. That's just really sad. Bandage changes and how long they take can vary greatly. Depending on how motivated Garrett is and how motivated I am, I have had bandage changes that have taken as long as five hours. If he's got bad areas and sticking spots and deep wounds and stuff like that, sometimes he will have to sit and fight through loosening up some of these embedded bandages for a half an hour. I mean, it's just agonizing. And if I have the time, I will let him work at getting it off himself because it's just way too painful for him to um, have me just try to you know, work him off. It, it gives him a little more control over the really painful issues like that. So unfortunately, yeah, it can take a really long time. And typically the bandage routine in our house is that while Garrett's out in the hot tub, either with his dad or his brother or both, I'm inside setting up the bandages, sterilizing the table, setting up his bedding for when he gets out. I typically do that first. Then um, as after I do the bedding, I have to set up the actual bandaging materials that I use. Everything is just rolled with rolled gauze to hold the Mepilex, the Mepilex transfer, the Vaseline gauze layers that are on his body in various areas. And then on top of that, I go over it with the four inch roll gauze just to kind of hold it in place. So it's kind of a layer upon layer and that's about the gist of it. And uh, all that takes me about a half an hour to set up by the time I cut everything. But there's definitely a bond between Garrett and I. He depends so much on me. We definitely have a closeness that is unusual because we spend so much time together. We go through so much together. I mean, yeah, the bandage changes are much more horrible for him than they are for me. But it's something that I'm there for every time. So much of his care involves having to inflict pain. I mean, there's just no way around it when you're doing bandages. It's painful. And during that time of, you know, inflicting the pain, he might say something really nasty like, In the end, he can say things like that if he needs to, because he and I know that we love each other unconditionally. We really do. When we have these bad times and bad days, we always hug. We always express to each other how much we love each other, because we have to. We have to. There's some ugly parts to this disease, and you know we have to make sure that we stay bonded, because we rely on each other so much to get through this. Right? Don't act shy.